in 2015 it says there was 14 terminations carried out under the Act because of real and substantial risk to the physical health. There was nine emergency uh, terminations carried out due to the real and substantial risk, and there was three because of suicidal intent. Now, would you uh, agree, Professor, that because of the fact that there's only three in 2015 that were uh, ter terminations carried out because of uh, suicidal intent, there clearly is an awful lot of distressed women going abroad still in very agitated states. As, you know, and if you could just elaborate on that. And from a clinical point of view, where does that leave psychiatrists, psychologists, GPs, uh, just clinicians in general, uh, allowing a patient with their files under their arm in a very distressed state to a, an airport for a, to carry out, to get a, have a termination carried out in another jurisdiction? Where does that leave you in terms of your ability to care for a patient, um, either in advance and when, when returning? And does it put you in a very difficult position in the sense that you can't counsel a patient or advise a patient that a termination uh, may resolve uh, her suicidal in, uh, intent? Uh, and if you could just elaborate on that, yeah. please. Well, thank you for the questions, Deputy Keller. And um, yeah, um, you're, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. There have been uh, three reports from the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act, three annual reports with three women who had the procedure in 2014, three in 2015, and one in 2016. Um, I think I might have mentioned earlier that the, my, my view is that the women who are suicidal are going to England, the women who can travel are going to England, and why wouldn't they? Um, you know, why would anybody stay here who had the means to be subjected to an inquisition um, uh, to see three specialists? I mean, specialists are intimidating people, you know, um, senior specialists. It's, they, you know, they usually don't live in the same place. Um, they're interrupting their normal routine, so whatever appointment it is, it's not going to be usually during working hours. So it's a hugely difficult process. Why would somebody subject themselves to that when they can go to the UK? Um, it's, you know, going to the UK is shameful, but subjecting yourself to th that sort of um, repeated um, questioning is, you know, it's, it's, it's soul destroying, it's humiliating. So um, I think you're absolutely right. I think a lot of women are saying, you know, I'm distressed, potentially suicidal if I don't get this abortion, and I'm, I'm leaving, I'm out of here. And I would say the other point in relation to that that's very important is that it's the women who can't travel. They become suicidal because they can't travel. So it's not, we're actually creating, we are creating suicidal women. We are creating desperate women by this constitutional clamp. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I wonder, I wonder, would we have as much um, difficulties and as much, uh, so many tragedies in relation to abortion um, if we didn't have this uh, clamp? Would, would situations escalate so quickly? I don't think they would. 